The spinning blades were Evaldi's favorite. I always thought them a bit garish. they suffered the same fate? Yes. But we'll save them. You are both very brave. I wish you luck. Valhalla awaits. Both? She didn't even notice me. This was our last one. Aye, lad. On to the rook stole our Valkyrs then. If 
you remember, it's next to the two oarsmen statues on the path we took to Thamur's chisel. This queen of yours, she is strong, yes. Stronger than these other Valkyries we have faced. That's putting it mildly, brother. Then we must prepare ourselves.
I see you're actually enjoying Ivaldi's workshop. You've certainly spent enough time here. Fine piece of work. If I say so. The secret to any craft is in the fine details. Oh no, we can't forget you! your um, righteous fury. Working on those is a privilege. Was there more to... Discuss. To work it is.
See you next time you need something. I can't figure out. Odin wants to prevent Ragnarok. But the serpent's already been there and seen it. So hasn't he already failed? Beats a tricky thing, lad. And Odin's just arrogant enough to think he can get the best of it. Fate is another lie told by the gods. Nothing is written that cannot be unwritten. On that, brother, you and the old father may just agree. Even if he can't prevent Ragnarok, he still hopes to learn enough details to influence the outcome. Remind me later to tell you about the wolves. Mistress of war. After any conflict, big or small, she would be first on the scene, sussing out the worthy spirits for a free trip to Valhalla. A gruesome task. She took great pride in it. Any conflict? Impossible. It's true. She had help from her sisters, of course. But Gunnar was always first to arrive. Her judgment of the fallen was unparalleled, and an invaluable resource to Odin. She was one of his favorites. Ah, uh, go and do. Beautiful Gondu. And? Huh? That's it? Beautiful Gondu? No story or anything? Uh, oh, sorry, lad. The sight of Gondu always took my breath away. Gondu, this is none other than Gerdrifu, the master of arms in Valhalla, responsible for arming and training Odin's inheritor. His what? His army come Ragnarok. The entire reason Valhalla exists, you see. The Ain here they are, wait in the Great Hall endlessly, feasting, drinking, and fat. Ah, uh, fornicating themselves silly. Once Ragnarok begins, Odin calls them into service to fight on his behalf. Gerdry Fool had her hands full training that lot. This, my friends, is Kara. Now, Valkyries are volatile by nature, but Kara, the lass is Wild Storm personified. A Wild Storm? Aye, calm and collected. Then the air would shift and the fury of our storm would unleash. It was beautiful in a way, assuming you could find proper shelter. Our tears would cleanse the blood-soaked battlefields. This is Rota, a chooser of the slain. 
I thought all the Valkyrie did that. Not exactly, lad. Although that is what they're most famous for, and by far their greatest responsibility. You've seen what happens to the dead without the judgment of the Valkyries. Hellwalkers. That's right. Rota, Gunnar, Skuld. Without them to clean up the aftermath of battle, hell overflows with souls meant for Valhalla. A sorry state of affairs. Rota must be beside herself. Ah, here we have Air, the healer. A Valkyrie healer? Strange. Air was strange, as a matter of fact. Very quiet, very calm. Where our sisters were violent rapids, Air was a gentle stream. She healed the wounds of both mortals and gods, and even a certain all knowing sage who once drank too much and fell off a mountain. Ugh, not my proudest moment. Well, well, Hilda, mistress of battle. She and Odin got on quite well, actually. Her and the other Valkyries, not so much. She would spend most of her time here in Midgard observing discord between the living and sewing some up herself from time to time. She lived for conflict. Some say she was conflict personified. I wonder what will become of her now that she's free. Old woman, once the daughter of a powerful chieftain, she fell defending him during a reaver attack. Orun was escorted to Valhalla, where she chose to devote her afterlife to the pursuit of knowledge above all else. Quite unusual behavior amongst the